Joining us now, Professor T. Pratip from IIT Madras, who has been chosen for a Padma Shri by the Indian government, and he is known for his affordable technology to take cutting-edge science to the masses, and his technology to purify water from pesticides is being used by over 9 million people across the country. Professor, thank you very much for your time. Congratulations. Thank you. Thank Tell you. us about your technology that's being used now across the country. What does it do? Most important point is it is not my technology. It is my team's effort. Right. It's the institute's effort and, uh, and the nation's effort. We have been in a position to look at the science of advanced materials in the context of clean water. So we found that several nanomaterials have this unusual capacity to break pesticides to harmless species in drinking water at room temperature at very, very low concentrations. And we found several other interesting aspects of nanomaterials. We found that some of them can clean, uh, remove arsenic from drinking water, from fluoride from drinking water, uranium, etc. So collectively, we have been in a position to take all of these technologies together, uh, we have reached about 10 million people. The industry has accepted this. Most of these purifiers could be using this technology now. When you thought about this many years ago, uh, was nanotechnology acceptable in, at that time? Well, 18 years ago when I started uh, looking at nanomaterials for clean water, people said that uh, maybe this is not the right thing to do. Nanotechnology could be great in the context of... Um, electronics, uh, new kinds of memory devices for healthcare. Yes, all of that, you know, all of those different aspects are fantastic, useful. But I thought that nanomaterials can do wonders in clean water. And ours was the first one to get commercialized. Right. So nanochemistry in the context of clean water for the first time. Did the institute get a huge royalty for this? Uh, altogether, uh, the pesticide technology would have uh, given us over two and a half crores. Uh, water technologies of mine would have produced about four and a half crores for the institute. We are now at Professor Pratip's lab. Uh, Professor, lots of areas in India are facing water scarcity, drought conditions. Uh, what is your focus now? Are you trying to find solutions for these challenges? Water touches upon every aspect of life. Uh, where there is water, there is contamination. Right. You need to clean, you need to purify water. Where there is no water, you have to find new ways for creating water. Right. Where water is contaminated, probably agricultural produce is contaminated. Health is affected. Right. So we look at various aspects mm -hmm. around water. Right. In fact, every aspect of water. Right, right, right. You want to share something about uh, any such specific focus? Uh, well, we have been looking at new ways of uh, creating water from air. Right. We have been looking at new ways of filtration. We have been finding or creating methods for sensing contaminants. How about an affordable sensor which you can attach to your mobile phone. You look at um, a water bottle, you show your sensor at a water bottle without inserting your device into it, can you detect contaminants? Right. All these are possibilities. We don't have solutions yet, but we are working on them. Professor, while you Make sure that uh, your research has relevance to the challenges faced by the common man, including IIT, many schools of excellence who do research. Their research doesn't have a direct connect with the people. There is a disconnect. How do we address this? Well, uh, people have to see uh, the relevance of their science. They have to see that their science can be ultimately used by people with the resources, infrastructure available, the mechanisms available. Oftentimes, we don't have everything. Right. We have pieces of these mechanisms, but then the whole cycle is not completed. 
you may have excellent researchers who can develop technologies but there is no mechanism to convert that technology to a prototype there is no mechanism probably to take such a prototype to the field and test it there may not be a mechanism to get money their their students may not be excited to build a company so all of these together we say is an ecosystem and that ecosystem probably is what we have been in a position to build here at iit madras in global rankings research is one area where be it iits or any other universities across our country lag behind compared to say stanford or berkeley yeah. uh, where is that gap how uh, that requires to be filled in you know here research is individuals excellence but real research is collective excellence i can't be a master of everything right so we have to have more and more interactions and those interactions have to be nurtured mm -hmm. you may be a great material scientist but you need computations you need modeling you need great theory uh, this if that collectively if that happens then you do great science we have to create an environment for enhancing that and nobel soon don't know work is what uh, you know you have to keep doing work and when you do that uh, recognitions come and you should in work for recognitions right professor thank you so much for your time and we wish you all the best and thank your team you. thank you that was professor t pradeep at the iit madras talking to us in chennai with edwin sam daniel find the tv